Good evening, campers. It's your camp counselor, Tails here, and welcome back to the campfire. Tonight, we have a very special guest, Mavi True Crime, telling us a very spooky story by the campfire. Be sure to check out her channel, linked in the description below, and be sure to grab extra marshmallows. You're gonna need them. So sit back, relax, and enjoy these creepy tales. Hi everyone, I'm Mavie True Crime, and today I'm partnering with Tales by Campfire to produce this amazing video. Today's video is called Please Pay Inside. Let's get it started. Peyton turned into the small gas station, cursing at herself for not getting gas in town when she had left the campus. She was halfway through her six hour drive home in the middle of nowhere, and she would be totally lost if it wasn't for the little blue line on her phone GPS. It was after midnight, and she was tired and weary from the road. She unplugged her phone from the dash and grabbed her purse, looking around outside before stepping out. It was a little two-pump station with a faded sign that left out any recognizable franchise. There were no other cars and no traffic as far as the eye could see. She didn't really want to stop, but the fuel light was on and the GPS said there wasn't any other opportunity for 30 miles. She didn't want to chance it, and she made a mental note to think ahead next time. With a sigh, she swung her door open and stepped out into the brisk night. The overhead fluorescent flickered softly, and the cool breeze waved at her long hair as she walked around the back of the car, already fishing out her debit card. When she came to the pump, she let out a heavier sigh at the paper sign taped over the card reader. Scrolled in pen, she read, simple message, please pay inside. After a quick glance around, she headed in. The door jingled as she pushed through. The gas station smelled of bleach and stale air. An elderly man with glasses and beady eyes offered a wave as she passed. She nodded awkwardly and headed to the refrigerated section, deciding to get a caffeinated tea for the rest of the drive. She walked down the closest aisle, twirling her hair on her finger as she walked. She passed the candy bars, overpriced medicine, and a cork board littered with flyers. She scanned the drinks, seeing rows and rows of brands she didn't recognize. She grabbed the most expensive one and hoped for the best. On her way back to the counter, she couldn't help but stop and glance at the cork board. Aside from the local ads, it was filled with missing persons. She looked from picture to picture, still twirling quietly. Some photos were clearer than others. Some of grainy quality, others faded with age. They were all women each in different poses and different angles. Just as she went to pull away, her twirling stopped, and she noticed a strange similarity between them all. They all seemed to be taken in or around this gas station. But just before Peyton was about to leave, she caught the flash from a Polaroid camera. I was always told not to look out of a window at night because you might not like what's looking back at you. They call this kind of thing an old wives tale or something like that. But for me, it was just a bunch of silly crap. So I made a point to do the exact opposite. Like most people my age, I guess I felt like I was spitting in the face of some outdated, half-assed logic that some old person had come up with. I mean, who the hell goes around looking into people's windows, am I right? And since I didn't believe in ghosts, monsters, demons, or whatever, I didn't give that notion a thought either. Sure, some of you will say that there are nutcases that have been known to do this sort of thing, but I've always lived in a very nice neighborhood, so the likelihood of this happening 
was very slim, or so I thought. One night, I got out of bed to make a late night deposit into the porcelain bank. Once the transaction was complete, I washed up and was all set to head back to my room. As I turned the light off and closed the bathroom door, I decided I was feeling kind of parched, so I went to the kitchen for a drink instead. Retrieving a glass from the cabinet, I opened the fridge and filled it with some tasty cucumber lime water I had made earlier, because who wants to drink boring tap water? With my thirst now quenched, I sat the empty glass on the counter and was about to leave the kitchen when I glanced up at the window. Might as well take a peek, I said snidely as I walked over and looked out. As usual, nothing was there, and feeling a bit more smug, I turned to walk back to my bedroom, but then I stopped. What's one more look gonna hurt? I asked arrogantly. Turning back, I returned to the window and looked out once more. The most horrible face I had ever seen stared back at me. It was pale white, and as I gaped at the horrifying thing, a wide, inhumane smile spread across its visage. As if that was not horrifying enough, the thing's ghastly grin was filled to the brim with sharp, needle-like teeth. Fighting down the urge to piss my undies, I tore myself away from the window with a scream, ran back to my room, and then jumped into bed, pulling the blankets over me. Still hysterical, I tried to purge my mind of what I had just seen, but the abomination's ghoulish face was seared firmly into my brain. What the hell was that? I whispered to myself when a semblance of sanity finally returned to me. No sooner had I asked the question that I decided that I did not want to know the answer. Instead, I tried to put it out of my mind and go back to sleep, but it took a long while for that to even happen. The next morning, my parents asked me if I screamed in the middle of the night for some reason, which caused a fresh chill to run down my back. Not wanting to think about the previous evening's fearful events, I shook my head and gave them some lame excuse about seeing my reflection in the window and how it had scared me. Content with this explanation, the two of them went back to their prior conversation and there was no further discussion. Later on, after much inner debate, I began to feel convinced that I had most likely imagined the whole thing in the first place. It had been the middle of the night, I was extremely tired, and my eyes were probably playing tricks on me. With this fresh perspective in my mind, I went about my day, never giving this situation another thought. That evening, my parents were out, and I found myself alone in the house working on some college stuff. By the time I'd finished, it was getting late, and I was feeling famished. There's a container of hummus and some artisan crackers with my name on them in the kitchen, I told myself cheerfully. Putting my coursework away, off I went, and soon after, with a snack in my hand, I started to go back to my room. As I passed the window, I stopped and glanced at it. I really didn't want to look, but I refused to bow to superstition. It was 2020 after all, and I had a partial college education for crying out loud. My brain just wasn't built like that. Defiantly, I walked over to the window and looked out. Nothing. See there, I told myself haughtily, superstition is wrong again. I walked a few steps down the hall, turned around, and then went back to the window before looking out it once again. The thing was there, smiling its evil smile. With horror descending upon me like a shroud, I dropped the hummus and crackers as I backed away from the window. My vocal cords wanted to scream, but my body was shuddering so badly that I couldn't even make a sound. The grinning terror on the other side of the glass raised a pale hand and waggled a long finger at me like a mother chastising her child. Maybe through some unknown inner strength or just plain desperation, 
I pulled myself together long enough to flee to my room. Unfortunately, as I entered, I saw that the blinds of my two windows were open and the hideous bastard stared sadistically at me from both of them. Without missing a beat, I ran back into the hall. Feeling like it was my only chance, I entered the bathroom while slamming the door behind me. With fleeting sanity, I slumped down onto the toilet with my head in my hands. Please, just go away, I begged through my sobs. Hearing a tap from above me, I looked up at the small bathroom window. The grotesque thing was there too, smiling its ass off as it shook its head. It wasn't going to stop apparently. Now reduced to a hopeless, quivering mess, I crawled into the shower and pulled the curtain closed. I existed there for the remainder of the night, sleep never coming to save me from my living nightmare. My parents found me there the next morning. Hysterically, I tried to tell them what had happened, but they could only look at me like I was going crazy. Then, as I went through the house covering every window, they decided that most assuredly, I was crazy and made arrangements to admit me to the hospital. It's been a month since then, and despite a few rough days initially, I've come to the conclusion that it's really not that bad here. The doctors and nurses are super friendly and very supportive. In fact, they even made sure that I got a room without any windows, which has really helped me in my mental state. Things have been going so well that a few days ago, I got my cell phone back Minus a few pertinent apps, regrettably. But you know how it is. Baby steps. With all this extra time on my hands, I've been thinking about the circumstances that led me to this point, And I've decided that maybe I was wrong. Old wives tales and superstitions are no joke. People back then knew way more about things that we folks living in the here and now have chosen to ignorantly forget. So, if you're hearing this, do not blow off the old ways. They exist for a reason. Now, that being said, there's another saying I've heard that's been on my mind lately, especially considering that I have a mirror in my room. It's the one about the eyes being the windows to the soul. Hey campers. It's Tales, and thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to become an official camper by subscribing to the channel. I promise, I won't let the boogeyman get you. So long as the campfire stays lit, that is. And keep munching on your s'mores, campers. I'll see you next time.